Okay, in this example, we're going to look at how we find the domain of functions that come from composition. So in this case, suppose that these are the two functions, g and f. So I don't have an algebraic equation for them. They're just given exactly by this table of values. And first, just to get warmed up, uh, I want you to try to find what f of g of negative 1 is. So if you remember, this is the same as writing it like this. Okay, so if you notice, this means that first we're going to see where, we're going to take negative 1 and we're going to see where g pairs it. So negative 1 is paired with 2 by the function g. And then we're going to take that output and we're going to see where that gets paired by my function f. So 2 gets paired with 3 by my function f. So the overall output of this is going to be 3. Okay, now we're using that. We're now going to think about what is the domain of this composite function. So clearly negative 1 is in the domain because if we input it into the composite function, it is paired with an output of 3. So we're going to come up with a set of numbers that are in the domain. So I'm just going to write it in set notation. So negative 1 is going to be in that set. So now put this on pause and see if you can come up with the rest of the numbers that will be in the domain. Okay, so now we're going to look back at our inside function g. And one of the first things that you can do is look at what is not in the domain of g. So if you notice, 1 is not in the domain of g. So there's no way that it can be in the domain of my composite function. So that's one of the first places to look, is you're going to start with the domain of your inside function. All right, then we're going to look at the remaining parts in the domain. So we'll look at 0, 2, and 3, and we're going to see if these will also be in the domain of the composite. So if we start with 0, this is in the domain of g. It's paired with 5, but then notice what happens. When I try to input 5 into my function f, it's undefined. So 0 is not going to make it into the domain of my composite function. We can check the other two. Let's check 2. 2 gets paired with 3 by my function g, and 3 gets paired with negative 1 by my function f, which means that 2 will make it into my domain. It comes and then lastly, we'll check what happens to my input 3. This is in the domain of g. It gets paired to 5 by my function g. But again, we know that 5 does not get a pair with f by my function f. It's undefined. So it will not make it all the way through. So it will not be in the domain. So in this case, my domain is just going to be negative 1 and 2. And this is going to give us a general strategy for how we can do this when we have algebraic functions. So the general pattern you can notice is when you're finding the domain of a composite function, you're going to start with the domain of the inside function, in this case g, and then you're going to exclude values where the composite function is not defined. Okay, so now we're going to revisit the original function that we started with, and then this time try to find the domain of g of f of x. So go ahead and put this on pause and come up with the set of inputs that are going to be in the domain. Okay, so now notice for this problem, you're going to be starting with the domain of f. And so we know the domain of f are the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. So those are the possibilities. But now we may eliminate some of those if they don't make it all the way through our composite function. So notice an input of 0 here is mapped to an output of 1 by my function f. But if I take 1 as an input to g, it's undefined. So that's going to tell me that 0 will not be in the domain of the composite function. Now we can trace, we can try 1. So 1 gets mapped to 0 by my function f. If I take 0, it's going to get mapped to 5. So 1 does make it all the way through. Okay, and we can do this similarly. You notice that 2 will make it all the way through, so it's going to be in my domain of the composite. 3, 3 goes to negative 1, negative 1 gets mapped to 2, so that makes it all the way through as well. 4, I have a problem again, because 4 is in the domain of f, however it doesn't make it through the composite function, 
because 1 gets ma is not in the domain of G. So that will not be, 4 will not be in my original domain of my composite. And then lastly, 6, we can see, will make it all the way through, so 6 will be in the domain. Okay, so now let's try this idea, now that you can see it with this table of values. Let's go back to an algebraic example, similar to what we did in class, and see how you find this algebraically. Okay, so given these two functions, f takes what you give it and pairs it with 1 over that minus 2. g takes what you give it and pairs it with the square root of that plus 4. So let's find the composite function and then its domain. So put this on pause and see if you can find both. Okay, so first the composite function, as a reminder, it may help you everywhere you see f to think of f takes what you give it, so give it an empty box, and pairs it with that 1 over that minus 2. And so if I'm going to give it g as the input, then I'm going to get it, it's going to have an output of 1 over the square root of x plus 4 minus 2. Okay, and now we can leave it like this. Technically, there's a way to get the radical out of the denominator, but for the point of this example, I really want to focus on the domain. So we can leave it in this form for now. And now let's think about the domain. So the first thing we need to do is look at the domain of our inside function. And we notice that we're going to have uh, problems if my input value is less than negative 4. So basically my, my domain is going to be the set of all inputs that are greater than or equal to negative 4. Now I need to look at my composite function and look at its domain. And so notice in my composite function I'm going to have an issue wherever my denominator is equal to 0. I.e. I'm going, let's get some more space here. So I'm going to need to exclude the values where the denominator is 0. Okay, and if I go to solve this, this is going to tell me that the square root of x plus 4 is equal to 2, or that x plus 4 is equal to 4, which is going to tell me I have an issue when x is equal to 0. That's when my denominator will be 0. So I need to exclude the value x equals 0 from my domain, which means that my overall domain of my composite function is going to be the set of all values that are greater than or equal to negative 4, strictly less than 0, and then also greater than 0. Okay, so it's going to be this set now. So that had two steps. I started with the domain of the inside function, then I algebraically figured out what the composite function was and figured out what its domain will be, and together use that to figure out the domain of my composite function.